What is an LAS file? Well, we have this interesting picture of a Mountie that I put here because the LAS file format was not introduced by a logging service company. It was put together by the Canadian Well Logging Society. So these are the folks up there in Canada who are delivering you cheap drugs while they're also trying to deliver logs to you that can be read. And the good thing about it is that the Canadian Well Logging so Society also has a website and it has a lot of supporting features then on that LAS standard. It's very simple, but they have free downloadable software to verify LAS and various other things. So it's a good format to work with. So what does it stand for then? It actually stands for Log ASCII Standard. And it's the A that's the magic word, ASCII. That simply corresponds to a text-only file. So an LAS file, for example, can be read with a word processor of any kind, by a spreadsheet, anything. And you can even write an LAS file if you wanted to by hand where you would get into, say, Word, and then instead of clicking Save, you would click Save As, and you select Text Only. So it's as plain as plain can be. It simply has codes for numbers, letters, spaces, and so on. <coughs> that ASCII was actually made the federal standard by President Johnson back about 1965. Back in the days where they were trying to make things simple so everything could be accessible. So let's actually look to see what one looks like. And here we see the LAS file then for that same well, McCoy number 131. And we see here, the first part here simply consists of the header with the kind of information you'd expect to see on a standard header. Putting out the names of the various logs that will be seen recorded. And down here, we have the mnemonics then for the different kind of logs. And then here come the digits. The standard rate, the frequency of digitizing then, is at two readings per foot, unless you have some amazingly complex logs that needs finer resolution. But that is the standard because most of the common logging tools have a resolution of somewhere between two and three feet. So by having a digitizing frequency of two readings per foot, you're pretty much capturing all the information that's there. Of course, that would work for this country if you're in Canada, you would see things in metric form, in which case depth would be in meters, and the digitizing frequency is most commonly 10 readings per meter. There was a confused period when uh, LAS files would sometimes be on the so-called footrick system, and that is where things were recorded in meters, but digitized at frequency of two readings per foot. So there's all sorts of strange files that you can sometimes come across if you dig back into the past. Okay, the LES format then, two parts, header information and then the log data. And on the LES header, you have the records that give well and logging information, just like you want to see. The comment records start with a pound sign, so anytime you're looking at the header of an LES file and you see a pound sign, that is just simply information useful to the user. So any high-end logging program will ignore something that begins with a pound sign. You could actually introduce some lines beginning with a pound sign and write out your favorite poem or whatever, and it would be ignored. But sensible things you might add would be, for example, uh, formation tops, perforations, and so on. So it means that you actually have some control. If you want to modify an LS file for your purposes, you can do so. Now, otherwise, we'll see the sections then are broken up with these, what to my eyes look a uh, sine wave character, but apparently they're called tilts, and they signify different sections then of that LAS header. Now, if you're reading an LAS file with, say, Word or a spreadsheet program, it takes no notice of any of this. It just simply reads it. So the reason why those tilts are put in is because if you have high-end log analysis software, Part of the program will actually be looking for these tilts so that it can deliver the information to you in a very easy, accessible manner. That's why you're paying, or part of the reason why you're paying for some of this high-end software. But, on the other hand, if you're simply working with Excel, no problem, you can simply download this information. So, tilde v, that simply gives the version 
Fortunately, there are only three versions. I say that because when I was young, the word standard meant standard. It meant it doesn't change. But unfortunately, that's not the case in the computer world. It changes constantly. However, most of the versions you'll see in Kansas will be either 1.8 or 2. There will be cases where you'd like to have three because that allows you to put any kind of information you can think of. So that's why the Canadian Well Logging Society went full broke for LAS3. But LAS2 is, is far more common. Then otherwise, we'll have the wrap feature, whether in fact there are multiple lines per depth or whether you simply have one line per depth. Till W is the information about the well. Till C is the information about the log curves. And that will actually give a, a three-letter mnemonic of the type of curve, the unit it was measured in, and then finally, hopefully, a description of what that log is. Tilde P, the parameters from the well. So there's various issues, for example. You expect to see measurements, say, of the resistivity of the mud, the mud filtrate, the type of mud that was in the hole. Again, the kind of information that you would see on a standard visual log header. Then we get down to the third kind of record and this will be breaking down where you have the digital logs themselves. Okay, so here's the data section. It begins with a tilde A and I say the digits will then come out for the entire well then at, a reading, at two readings per foot. Now, if you have LS files, sometimes you will come across an LS file which is a little cryptic, and that is it has incomplete information on it. So two sources then are first, we've already seen the Canadian Well Logging Society who invented the format, and then we also have the SPAA here, the Society of Petrophysicists and Well Log Analysts. And they're very useful if, for example, you have an LS file that gives the mnemonic for the logs, but doesn't tell what the mnemonics mean. Now, for example, if I see a mnemonic that says GR, I say gamma ray. If I see a mnemonic that says ILD, I say deep induction log. But say, for example, I had something that said PXP, and there was no description of what that meant, then I say I have no idea. But on this website here, you will find the directories then for all the major companies in terms of the mnemonics they use and what logs they mean. This is an issue we're faced with every day at the Kansas Geological Survey when we get LAS files submitted and we have to make sense then of some of the more obscure logs. In fact, up there at the survey we develop what we call our bird book. Kind of like an Audubon bird book to give all the possible mnemonics that you could have to link up with the, the various logs. But I emphasize that so that if you do get involved in the LAS file business and start to read them, and you can't even figure out what logs they are, join the club. Don't beat up on yourself. We're all faced with that same mystery why logging service companies won't simply write out what those log formats are. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So this is your go-to source if you come across a mystery. I'd emphasize, by the way, that you use the ending here of ORG. If you put spwa.com, you'll get the Society of Professional Women of Los Angeles. So org is important if you want to access them. Okay, let's see how we can get at this information. Fundamentally, then from the survey perspective, you will go to the energy section of the website and you click on oil and gas wells.